<laughs> Welcome everyone to another episode of Slacker Scotty. I am your host, Scott Tilda the Witch. And boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have one so now Lydia Manson, and she is the podcasting host of Just the Deets. Hey, Lydia, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm good. That is a horrible witch's I'm gonna, voice. You're not going to be able to keep that up the whole time. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not doing it the whole time. I just wanted to do my intro a little different, but uh, I'm so glad to have you back on. I think I had you back on uh, on here in January, and here we yeah. are again So uh, for a Halloween episode. So happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Absolutely. First question I need to ask you, because you um, host the podcast Just the Deets. Um, what made you want to start up this podcast and what is this podcast about? So it's so funny when I first came up with the idea for just the deeds, it was under the guise of all things strange and unusual. So what I wanted it to be was <laughs> I wanted it to focus on different, like strange and unusual topics. So like, if you go back, like the first episode is about Mike, the headless chicken. Um, and then we have an episode about, uh, Loch Ness Monster and then the New Jersey Devil so I wanted to do like all of these like different things that you've heard about like growing up you know and bring on different people I've worked with or wanted to work with or just know through the indie industry have them talk about these things with me um, but I realized after a few episodes that it didn't work out the way I wanted it to because people didn't want to really like research it with me which is nothing to do them you know like they have their product their projects they want to talk about which is perfectly fine so ended up going more on the spectrum side of just having different indie industry people come on and talk about themselves and their projects so it kind of like switched over yeah. to that okay um, I'll have to get through. <laughs> nice so. well um i have an idea for just the deeds and not i don't think a lot of people know about this it's the gordon mountain ghost in gordon pennsylvania it's literally like five minutes of where i grew up where my mom currently lives um and uh i'm gonna i'll send you a message of that um after the podcast and look into it and if you want to do that um me, uh, have me on we'll talk about the gordon mountain ghost in gordon pennsylvania and they even made that a character or something or other in uh i think it was grant one of the grand theft autos yeah that's awesome I love like okay. learning about all the i had never had it not been for um tom D'Amico. he was actually the director of a short i did um called kiss me judas he's the one that actually told me about the new jersey devil nice. so had you know i'm not be friends with him i wouldn't have known about that so that i mean that was fun to learn about you know especially because it's just a few years from where i live so absolutely and uh, did you ever hear of centralia no i don't think i have you, you heard of silent hill right yes so uh central since so silent hill uh is ba ba is like about centralia it's the underground mine fires in centralia oh, okay. pennsylvania and uh that is right outside of Ashland. Again, another place that's about five minutes away from where I grew up, where my mom currently lives. And it's a, it's a very historical place. So those are two, th that and the Gordon Mountain Ghost are two things you definitely got to look into. And I can, like I said, I'll send them over to you and you can look into them and see what you think. But uh, those are like growing up in the Boy Scouts and everything and all that, like when we were camping, they would talk about the Gordon Mountain Ghost. It would scare the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's amazing it, it's, it's a very fascinating story um so like i guess um how is because i know we also know you're an actress so how um is podcasting different than being an actress so one i don't have to learn any lines when i do my podcast <laughs> <laughs> so i think that would be like the biggest plus to being a podcast <laughs> For an actress um and I mean I'm terrible because like I don't like you sit down and you write questions and everything I just am mm -hmm. talking to somebody I just think of questions off the top of my head I'm like mm -hmm. I should be like you know prepared um but I think you know when you're acting you have to be the character that they want you to be mm -hmm. um so being a podcaster I just get to be me yeah. so I you know like I don't have to be pretend to be anything else so I think that would be the biggest difference that absolutely and uh i mean 
I, yeah, I always make sure I'm prepared. And usually I ask questions that I don't have written down or anything that come up while we're talking and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I mean, I know, you know, Greg Gilbert, right? He, uh, yeah. he also uh, does what you do. He, uh, he ends up uh, thinking of right off of the top of his head. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I always do research about the person I'm mm -hmm. talking to. So like, and I, I have like that information to go off of. Yeah. I just, I'm not so good about like actually writing out questions. So. Yeah, makes sense. Sometimes makes if I get sense. really quiet, just be like, oh, she has no idea where she's going. I don't. <laughs> right. So do you always talk about like the paranormal type of stuff? Um, so I actually have a second podcast called Locked Up Paranormal. So okay. that is on actual paranormal activity. Um, my the I'm just the co-host on that. So my host name is Frank. Um between the both of us, we have over 33 years of experience being New York State Corrections officers. So we came up with the idea of doing a podcast talking about paranormal activity in prisons across the globe. Um, so we're about to start season two. And we, we said for season two, we were going to focus on like asylums. Um, so each episode will be about a different haunted asylum. And we actually got to go and do a in paranormal investigation at West Virginia State Penitentiary over the summer. So our first episode for season two, we're going to go over everything that like happened to us at the prison and right. stuff. So, so I'm exciting. thinking that you, uh, let's promote that really quick. Did you uh, witness anything paranormal or spooky? We did. We had a lot of activity. So um, Frank had, me and Frank had actually split up. Um, with the group that we had done. So we weren't together doing the actual investigation. Um, so when I was on my way, we were in um, this one area called the Sugar Shack, which was the prison wreck area. So there had been a few violent activities that had happened in there, you know, like inmates were killed and stuff. Mm -hmm. And while we were in there, um, I was sitting on a chair and we had the spirit box going and I was with um, Tim Shaw, who is a paranormal medium and investigator. Um, and so he's asking it questions. And then all of a sudden I felt like this intense pressure on my left arm. And I said that I'm like, oh, my God, it feels like somebody's holding onto my arm. So I asked the, the spirit box, I said, um, are you holding onto my arm right now? And you just heard over the spirit box, yes. And I was like, can you let go? <laughs> and after a few moments, I felt the release on my arm. Wow. And like, why didn't anybody have a camera rolling? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I would have laughed so hard if you said, can you let go? And he went, no. <laughs> Like I, I said, um, can you let go? And we didn't get, I didn't actually get like a verbal response on the mm -hmm. spirit box, but I did feel the pressure coming off. Wow. Um, wow. That's, cr that's really crazy. It was, really, it was pretty intense. That's and then really crazy. I will tell you a funny story about when we were on the investigation. Sure. So what the yeah, state penitentiary also does like a haunted house inside of it mm -hmm. from like, you know, the earlier evening hours before they do the investigations. And so we're walking down the one tier and Tim goes, Oh, Lydia, 12 o'clock. So I'm like, okay, I look straight ahead because that's 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And there's like a big mural painted on the one wall. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I don't know why he had to get my attention for that. Like I would have saw it, you know? Yes. So I just happened to like glance over, which would have been like three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And now, mind you, it's like two, three o'clock in the morning. And there's a mannequin there that has like a werewolf mask on. And I was not expecting it. Um, so I screamed. And apparently that's what Tim was trying to get my attention to. And I was like, I was like, that's not 12 o'clock. That's not 12 o'clock. And then they're all laughing at me because I screamed. And they're like, at least you have a really good scream. And I was like, thank you. You yeah. know, but I'm like, I was like, yeah, I was not expecting that mannequin to just be standing there. Because I was kind of like leading our group at the moment, you know. So <laughs> I was like, no, I've been standing over there. <laughs> I just but, Oh, that would have been me. Oh, my God. They're still rang on me. They're like, oh, remember when Lydia screamed? I'm like, yeah. I was like, remember when you didn't know the hands of the clock? Yeah, I remember that. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. That would have been me screaming like that. Oh, my God. I can only imagine that. Oh, my God. That's that's crazy. Because mm -hmm. you're in this haunted you know, place. And the fact that this mannequin with the werewolf mask is there, like, you don't expect. 
expect that yeah. little and you're in a haunted place so you're trying to keep your guard up for spirits or whatever seeing that thing oh my like geez <laughs> and i you know how you like just catch something out of the corner of your eye like yeah. that's what it was and that's when i screamed because i and i was so full of 12 o'clock the mural on the wall because that's what i had been told to look at and i'm like yeah i tell time <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so what is the hardest part about uh starting up a podcast in your opinion um I think it's a lot more work than you would think like into it you know like I think and I wasn't prepared I was like oh I can get on like a camera and talk for an hour right. yeah <laughs> yeah, like I, um, the first episode i talked about mike the headless chicken and i was like oh my god i know so much information about mike the headless chicken i was like i can talk for an hour about this i got 34 minutes in and i had all of my information was gone and normally i do an hour show it's live and i'm just like what am i gonna talk about for 26 minutes like i was like i was for sure that I had enough info to get me, like I had three pages full of notes on like the headless chicken and it got me through 34 minutes. Wow. So um, I realized when you have somebody else talking with you, like you do interviews or if I would bring on like a guest co-host or something like that, the time went a lot smoother. Yeah. Because I would have somebody to go off. Mm -hmm. the yeah, because I usually have uh, like, seven or eight questions and that usually gets me to 30 minutes at most because mm -hmm. it's me asking it and then it, depending how long the guest is to to uh actually you know respond or answer you know that question like for example adam marcus i i asked to i had like 10 questions on the interview uh, you know for my interview with him a couple years ago and his first and his the answer to the first question was like 32 minutes long <laughs> Whenever I'm on a podcast, I always feel like I talk so much and I get mm -hmm. done and I always apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they're like, oh, no, it's good. And, you know, it's good that people talk more. And I'm like, yeah, but I just feel kind of silly. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I love having guests on. Um, I love having like, you know, um, how do I say that? Um, I love I, I don't mind doing long interviews. I just know that normal, like some people don't like to sit and listen to an interview for like three hours or two hours. Yeah. If they want to, that's great. Um, and I usually do that when I'm working, if I'm at the office um, or if I'm driving. Um, but if I'm just sitting in my house, you know, and I see, oh, Slash Scotty posted an interview with Liddy Manson and it's like three hours long. I'm probably not going to watch it at my house because I have other things that I need to do around my house. <laughs> but um, but I if it, like that's why I keep my interviews between 30, maybe 40 max, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes less than 30. Um, but I noticed my demographics are better. Now, have you noticed that with your demographics for any of your podcasts where the like if you do an hour show, do you notice people sticking around for an hour or do they pre do they prefer an hour? Do they prefer less, more? Um, I haven't really nobody's really said anything to me about like if they wanted mm -hmm. it shorter or longer. Like I haven't gotten any feedback on that. Right. Um have like I just do mine on StreamYard so it goes live through Facebook. Okay channel um and then it also goes on twitch which i have like one follower on twitch so you know it's getting kind of serious but um <laughs> i just i don't know if i know enough about the statistics because like i have like 30 followers on youtube so i can't really like yeah. there's nothing <laughs> you yeah. know most of them, if you'll watch it just watch it live on facebook so i don't know if they're just like oh you know lydia's live let's go watch it i did have some I had a few people that like every Thursday they were right there, um, you know, at nine o'clock for me, which I was absolutely right. amazing. So um, I love those people for that. But nice. I don't know too much about my demographics. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you a tip with Facebook. I just found this out actually, and I don't know if it's just fan, if it's just fan pages or if it's actually like your profile if you have a set for a creator page. But mm -hmm. um, they have something called Facebook Stars, and if you have so many followers um like total on your profile or whatever then they then you get can activate facebook stars and if you're go if you go live then you're the people watching can send you as many stars as they want and they don't got to pay a thing and each star now brace yourself will pay you a total of three cents a star <laughs> but uh like but yeah like <laughs> 
And then like, I, I was watching, I think it might've been like a TikTok or something. And somebody was breaking down, like, you know, like the same video or whatever. And based mm -hmm. on like the views, they were breaking down, like how much money they made on each platform, like yeah. TikTok Facebook versus YouTube. And it was actually, I think Facebook that actually paid the most per view mm -hmm. out of all of the things mm -hmm. I had switched to that creator profile on Facebook and it like totally screwed over my messenger. Like I know you were having it. I remember you had posted that you had issues too. You were like, I'm not getting this message, like message yeah. on my, um, my other page. Yeah. I was, when you go to switch accounts on your messenger, you know, it would it said like 29 unread messages. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like I would click on it and nothing would be there. It would just be like that loading circle. Right. And I sent, so many like messages to Facebook to see if they would fix it. And then eventually just one day that profile was like gone. And I'm like, I guess that's their way of fixing it is just to completely get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, um, so I would have people that were messaging me and I wasn't, I wasn't getting it. I actually showed up on set and somebody was there and they're like, yeah, I tried to message you and they showed me the message and it showed like it was delivered. But like, you know how you can see when somebody opens it. Yeah. I'm like, I'll show you my messenger. I'm like, you're nowhere in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a couple of people that message me on the slash the Scotty page or on my fan page, Scotty McCoy. And they're like, they're like, Hey, uh, you're, are you getting messages from me? Or are you just not, no longer wanting to associate with me? I'm like, right. no, I'm not getting your messages. This happened multiple. So I had to make a status saying, Hey, yep. I'm not getting this, some messages. Some people I am others. I'm not. <laughs> And I'm like, and there was like no rhyme or reason to the people that I was getting the messages from. At first I was like, oh, maybe it's just like people I'm actually friends with right. and not follow, but that wasn't even true. So I was like, I just give up. So yeah. <laughs> eventually I just switched back to like the regular Facebook yeah. and now I think I get, I think I get my messages. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not yeah. ignoring out there if I didn't Yeah. <laughs> It is really crazy with how like how they did that and with the the fan pages itself because now each of your fan pages are your are like their own Facebook profile. Yeah. So I'm like I, I'm like I can't I give up and then I'm supposed to I'm supposed to have Twitter on top of it and I'm like Instagram so I'm like what I'm supposed to post the same exact thing to like five different sites? It's exhausting. Like. <laughs> I'm like, who's going to want to read? Oh, I just woke up today five different times. Like, you know, like it's too yeah. much. I don't have Twitter, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I interviewed this, uh, this guy, uh, was it? Yes. was today? Saturday, Thursday, I interviewed him. And, uh, he's, he, uh, said that, uh, just follow me. And then he gave his, uh, Instagram name. He said, I also have Instagram for all the films that I do, but every single thing, but I have it connected where my main one goes to all five of my other ones. So if you want to see whatever I post on the film one, just follow my main one. Right. <laughs> you're going to get the same exact post anyway. So it doesn't matter. Like, luckily I have, um, I don't know if it's luckily, but I ended up linking like my Instagram and my Facebook. So it would automatically post, if I post yeah. it on Instagram automatically post on Facebook and I'm like oh that saves a lot because I don't now I don't have to like go on to Facebook and actually make the post and type it out again and I'm like oh my god so many hashtags and apparently like 11 is the magic hashtag number like and I'm like this is this is too much like yeah. ridiculous. I'm like I don't even want to talk to me now <laughs> like <laughs> exactly so you mentioned that it is harder it is harder than most people think to start a podcast I mean mm -hmm. we both know that it is um just getting you know not just getting your fan base but like getting on like the audio platforms or getting the viewership or you know whatever um but if someone wants to trek into being a podcaster and start their own podcast knowing how hard it is to get their start what advice would you give them on what they can do to prepare for this adventure? Um, if I had to give advice, um, my biggest thing is I, I will always, I like StreamYard a lot because mm -hmm. I'm not tech savvy. Um, so I'm not good at like editing videos together and stuff and like pre-recording. So I was very happy with, oh, I can just log on to StreamYard, do my thing live, and it automatically posts the whole video. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Because I'm like the worst millennial ever. I don't know how to do all <laughs> that stuff. Like, my my laptop was not working, so I bought a new one instead of just <sighs> fixing it. 
Like <laughs> that is that's how I fix my problem. <laughs> my biggest advice is, you know, learn that there is multiple different ways to do your podcast. You know, yeah. um, there's so many, like you can have the video vodcast, uh, the vodcast, and then you can have just like, you can go to Spotify and just listen to it. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of the time you can just take the audio from the video and post it onto those streaming services. So, you know, like I would say you got to learn some technology. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, I know with, with my, like my podcast, there's a, every interview is so much work because yeah. like, like tech, technological issues. First of all, we had one not long ago that is probably going to be edited out of this video, but, uh, but technology issues. And uh, so I'm going to go in and edit that out. And I, I, so I post my edited video on YouTube, but I extract the audio and that goes on to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and like 25 different podcasting platforms. But on top of that, I got to research my guests. Now with you, I didn't really have to research that much because we're friends. I know who you are, yeah. but there's some guests that I don't really know anything about them or about their shows or about their projects. So I have to do the research to write up the questions. Yeah, exactly. and then, yeah so you got to do the scheduling and then you got to, you know, record and ask the questions. Then you got to edit and extract the audio and upload. There's so much that goes into making a podcast, especially when you pre-record. When you do it live, it's probably easier and you could probably verify that more than I could. And that's probably why I go that route. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. It must be easier doing it that way. And uh, I mean, there's so many different platforms you can use. I use Zoom, you use StreamYard. And, you know, then you can do like Facebook, just go on Facebook Live. You can just do Instagram Live. Um, I think Twitter yeah. might even have something live. YouTube live. You can do live. So there's so many different things. So many lives. So many lives that you can do. And uh, I mean, you just got to, the, the thing you got to do is reach your demographics. So if somebody wants to, I guess, reach the demographic. How do you, I guess, how do you get your uh, demographic? How do you reach out to people being like, Hey, these are, this is where my show is. You can watch it. Um, I'll just make a Facebook post, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I, I should promote more. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. I haven't done my show in a few months, so it's just kind of been like chilling and I'm like, Oh, how do I get like back into the game? Right. Um, we were really lucky with locked up paranormal because the paranormal field is just like huge. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like, you know, we had looked around and we didn't see like a lot of people talking about um, paranormal activity in prisons, like specifically. So I think, you know, like we hit our niche with that, but we were very lucky because we ended up going from like five subscribers on YouTube to we had hit a thousand Ooh. and, we were me and Frank, like me and Frank, we were just like texting back and forth, like over a couple of weeks. And I'm like screenshotting the page. I'm like, Oh my God, look how many subscribers we have. Like what is going on? Like, this is crazy. Like, yeah, we're promoting it, but I knew our reach wasn't that. And yeah. I had found out like through YouTube studio or something mm -hmm. that one of our videos ended up being on like a recommended thing. And I think that's why we ended up getting so many subscribers. It was just like a luck of the draw. I don't know how we yeah. got placed or what, but Cause I was like, Frank, I'm like, why do like the last five episodes have like almost 2000 views, but like the first five episodes have like three right. <laughs> people just didn't want to scroll, mm -hmm. but it, you yeah. know, like traffic is really difficult. Like when I would do just the deets, like I tended to focus more on like horror guests because that's mm -hmm. like the genre I had thrown myself into. Yeah. So I had to, you know, like find guests that were in horror films and stuff like that so it's just like knowing the people that you you start off with the group of people you know i guess and then hope they yeah. branch <laughs> yeah the the, the old-fashioned uh, word of mouth marketing that really comes in handy and the youtube algorithm is freaking crazy i mean i do interviews with so many guests I do so many big in uh big like rankings or top ten videos on big franchises or movies like Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, and all that. But the video that has the most views, I think it has like five thousand or six thousand views or something like that, and hundreds of comments of people giving their own rankings. Believe it or not, is all of the Banjo Tooie worlds ranked from uh from best like from the least greatest to the best greatest or whatever and it's like a game from 2000 for nintendo 64 and it's my most watched and commented video out of them all well it's the same thing on my tiktok like i cannot figure out the algorithm at all um you know so i 
I'm an avid cosplayer. So a lot of, you know, TikTok, you have to find your niche. Right. So I was like, okay, mine is going to be cosplaying, you know? So mm -hmm. I would make, and I talked to so many people and they're like, oh, you have to take the viral sounds. And even if it has nothing to do with your character, you make a video in character for that sound. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I ended up making one video on there. I was dressed as Wednesday Adams. And like the sound was when life gets so hard, what do you do? And I'm just like, yeet. Not even like, a, it's like a 10 second video. That video ended up getting like over 12,000 views. And I was, I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is my moment. I'm, you know what? I'm, just, I'm going to be TikTok famous. You know, I was not. <laughs> Cause my, my, <laughs> You know, I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be so funny. I, I did like the Wednesday Adam look again because I was like, you know, obviously people liked it. And I did it to um, Pharrell's I'm happy. And I just stood there with a scowl on my face. And I'm like, this is my happy face. And I was like, oh, my God, that's hilarious. This is going to this is going to push me even farther. Yeah, it was like 500 views. And I'm like, I can't figure this out. You know, right. and I was like, oh my God, like, thank you. I made another. I was like, thank you guys so much for all the views um, and stuff. And then it was like nothing. And I'm like, I get, I can't figure it. So I was like, I saw your cosplay. Your cosplay is freaking amazing. Thank you. Yes. You you do a Tiffany, right? I do Tiffany. Yep. She's yeah. a good one. Absolutely. Um, you met Alex Vincent in Tiffany, didn't you? When you were Tiffany. I, I was at a, con I was at Monster Mania and he was, him and Fiona uh, were both there. So right. was Brad and I really wanted to meet him but the line was so long and he was super expensive and I was like oh, I could meet like three people you know and I was like ah but yeah I had walked into the area that Alex was in and I was holding my Chucky doll and now my Chucky doll I've had since I was in high school I got it from Spencer so its hair is like a mess nice. and <laughs> I grew the character of Tiffany so all day I'm just like reciting lines from the movie and just like throwing my Chucky doll. So he looked, he looked a hot mess, Chuck. Um, I'm in there and, and Alex sees me and he calls me over and I'm like, me? So I went over there with my Chucky doll and he, of course he commented on Chucky's hair and I'm like, well, you know, he's not nice to me and I made him sweetest meatballs and this is what happens. So I, that was pretty cool. To, but, and then Fiona Dorf loved my uh tiffany i kept trying to tag like jennifer tilly on like instagram and stuff but she wasn't noticing but she's pretty busy so yeah yeah i uh i um interviewed christina Lee, who played uh who plays kyle and chucky the tv series was child play too and uh i re and uh we became pretty good friends after the interview because she was very impressed it was one of my best interviews i've done and uh I have my, and uh, I'm like, hey, uh, what I, I reached out to Alex Vincent months ago and he turned me down to do an interview. Is there any way you can nudge him to do an interview with me? She's <laughs> like, yeah, he doesn't do many interviews. He doesn't like doing interviews, but I'll see what I can do. So she messaged me maybe 10 minutes later. She goes, Alex said, message him on Instagram. He's waiting for your message. I'm like, Aww. So I got him and he, I was like, that's awesome. And I was so embarrassed because he, he got the time zone mixed up. He, he, he uh, did it an hour earlier. I'm like, oh, whoops, sorry. So I had a quick set up. And, and then he I'll goes, think... yeah. And then he goes, uh, he said, uh, like when I did my intro and I'm like, uh, I got um, Andy Bark. I mean, Alex Vince. <laughs> He's like, yeah. you were going to call me Andy Barkley, weren't you? I'm like, yes. He's like, it happens all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think I I think I did that with you for some reason. Like I could not remember the name Alex. And I was like, Andy from Child's Play. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and, back and I'm like, so embarrassed. I'm like, I know it's Alex. Fitz. I've met him in person. Like I, I can know his name, but right. sometimes you, you know, you just associate them with that character. Yeah, absolutely. So what does Brad Dorf charge at a con? Oh, I can't remember it now. Um, I think it was like 80 or a hundred dollars for the okay. like, selfie. And I was like, ah, I really want it. But like right. Alex Vincent was like 20 or 25. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and because Brad was the big name at that convention, yeah. the line was so long, wow. you know? Yeah. And the reason I was at the convention was because I was working with trauma. So I was supposed to be at the trauma table. So I'm like, I can't really like spend four hours in line right yeah. now because like then I would be right back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good point i eventually i'm i really hope i can meet him because i'm a huge fan of like obviously chucky but also like the exorcist 3 is like it yeah I really 
that movie. So I would really like to meet Fran one day. Yeah, that but would be super cool. Doesn't live that far from me. Okay. So I'm, I, and I was telling, I was like, oh my God, yeah. Like she said where she lives. And I was like, that's like maybe half an hour from me. And right. I was like, if you you know anybody, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Jennifer Tilly doesn't do cons, does she? I don't think she does. Um, she would make so much money at a con; it's ridiculous. He, well, Alex goes. He's like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "Your Tiffany looks great." He's like, "Can you do the voice?" And I was like, "Nobody can do the voice." Like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> "Like okay." <laughs> right. I want to interview her so bad, but the chances of getting her on my podcast are slim to none. Yeah, like I bring her like the photos I did as Tiffany on Instagram, but like she has her messages shut off. So you can't even like message her. Right. And let all like you, unless you're friends. And yeah. I was like, Oh, so I kept like tagging her. Um, Alex had commented on, this was before I had met him uh -huh. and I had Tiffany pictures on Facebook. He commented on them on Facebook nice. and I jotted it and I was like, Oh my God, this really just happened. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, Alex, he's a, he's a good guy. Um, I, I never met him yet, so I, I, he's, I would love to meet him. Uh, I went to my first con at the end of September into early October. I went to Monster Mania, Hunt Valley, Maryland, and I'm planning on going to all the Hunt Valley ones. They're now doing two a year instead of just one a year, so I'm really excited. But I, I spent, I think it was 520 bucks was how much I spent on celebrities, right? and it went it, fast. It does, and you're yeah. like, oh my god them all <laughs> yeah I, I took 700 with me and i i spent uh i think it was like 300 on day one because that's where i met most of the people and then the more expensive people i met on day two and the like because they were like if i have money left over maybe i will but i'm like i don't want to spend all 700 dollars neither and then <laughs> so, you have and all their cool crafts and you're like oh my yep. god i need all of this and yep. you're like my wallet does not need this <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, exactly and uh i uh I, like you know my new book came out and jamie lee curtis wrote the forward to it and um and uh i got all the halloween because it was a halloween reunion there so mm -hmm. all the halloween pe i got all the halloween people i got uh nancy loomis charles cyphers uh anthony michael hall and i the one of them i got was james jude courtney and uh i got him to uh sign the book and i said jamie lee curtis wrote the forward he's like no shit i'm like yeah he goes hold on a second he goes to his hand and he goes get me my phone I'm like okay so uh, she got his phone and he took a picture of it and he, he uh, showed me, he, he, sent, he uh, had it set up in a text and he showed me, he said, look who it's sending to. I'm like, holy shit, you're sending it to Jamie Lee Curtis. Like, yep. He sent it to her. He said, uh, look who's in my line. Do you, do you recognize this? He said, stand over here. Let's get our picture. He said, and then uh, he said, uh, he said, just if you have nothing to do, he said, just stand here. She usually gets back to me right away. I'm like, okay, sure. So I just waited for about five, five, ten minutes or whatever, and she got back to him, and she goes, oh, so that fucker's still making money off me. Well, tell him I said, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, he goes, well, here's a, a life-sized Halloween ends uh, poster. I still have it out in the living room. It's like a huge-ass poster. He goes, this is a, he goes, take one for free. Congratulations on your book. I'm like, awesome. Aww. Yeah, it's not like I haven't really, I haven't had any um, bad experiences, like meeting people. I know some people do, yeah. but it's, you know, everybody has a bad day, but I, I'm really lucky. I've had some really great experiences meeting people. Like mm -hmm. I totally fangirled over Kimberly Brown from Halloween Town. Mm -hmm. um, I almost, like my friend was laughing at me. He's like, I've never seen a fangirl before. Cause like I had, I met Lita. I'm at Lita Ford at that same convention, like a half hour before. And I'm like rocking out and taking pictures. And then I get up to Kimberly and I'm like, yeah oh my god you know like because i grew up watching that movie so to me yeah. like me was just like i'm yeah. like oh my god this is awesome so it's great yeah. that you get to meet people that you like look up to and you know yeah. And I, and I think that's like my favorite thing about conventions yeah a lot of people like that I, like a lot of people that aren't into cons or into horror or whatever they're like why would you spend like you know 80 dollars to meet this person and just get their autograph they're just a person i'm like because these are people i grew up watching i i it's like people spend money like i saved my money all year just to meet go to this convention so mm -hmm. I, that's what I did. And like, I met Ski Ulrich. I used my VIP. So, cause his line was eight and a half hours long. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I used my jump, skip the line pass. Cause you get one of them for the VIP when you buy mm -hmm. VIP. So I got, I used it and I was, I was first in his line. <laughs> and then all the dirty looks you get. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, cause I, um, the monster mania that I met Alex Vincent at, um, uh, mm -hmm. Matthew Lillard 
and Skeet were both okay. there. Their line, I was like, I'm not even going to attempt this. Like, yeah. it was, you know, out the door. and out, yeah. um, But I know, like, Matthew, I've heard amazing things about meeting both of them, yeah. um, especially Matthew, like he'll go, he goes through the line. And if he sees you have kids, he brings you to the front of the line. Exactly. If you're in like, wheelchair, he brings you like to the front of the line. So, and I know he, both him and Skeet both like stay after to finish yeah. out their line. So, you know, I'll, yes. I'll meet them one day. Yeah. Skeet was super nice. I talked to him about my dad and about my dad's battle of brain cancer and I'm passing away. And he gave me a big hug and He's like, he, he just gave me this talk and he's just like, you know, everything's going to be okay. He's like, uh, he's like, um, it seems like you, you know, you got through it. And he's like, he's just a super cool, really cool. And, you know, he, he was just a really nice guy overall. I never met Matthew Lillard. I really want to meet him, but Skeet was super, super cool. And I, yeah, it was a nice experience. And being first in line is, is amazing because I didn't have to wait for eight and a half hours. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I always tell people if you're ever at like a convention and like Felissa Rose is there, I always like recommend meeting her because she she's really awesome to me. Like she's super personable. You can tell she like genuinely cares about like talking to you and like meeting you and stuff. So that was I always recommend her to people. If you're ever to get a convention, Felissa's there, make sure you stop by and see Felissa because she's just like so nice so nice and she like remembers people too like if you start going to conventions and you meet her a couple times she remembers but i'm like that's yeah. insane she does conventions all the time yep. i interviewed her and i was uh was i think it was in july i interviewed her and i was gonna go meet her down in linthicum heights maryland um, I was going to meet her at a convention they were having another like a pop and horror con down there because she mm -hmm. was going to be there. Nancy and Vitter was going to be there and Dave Sheridan was going to be there. And Dave Sheridan and Felissa Rose both canceled because for because of filming obligations. And I was so bummed. And then I found and I had my ticket to go there and I was going to go to meet Nancy and Vitter. But unfortunately, something came up and I had a, that I had to do and uh, I didn't, wasn't able to go. And Nancy and Nancy and Vitter ended up messaging me. And she's like, why didn't you come? I was looking forward to meeting you. She goes, Aww. I wasn't even going to charge you to meet, get a picture with me and autograph something for you. That's awesome. Because <laughs> she, I even asked, because I asked her up front, I'm like, what, how much do you charge? So I know how much, because that was, my, that was going to be my first convention. Mine ended up being Monster Mania. Um, but uh, I asked her, how much do you charge? Because I didn't know how to find out the prices. And she goes, uh, <laughs> she said, usually I charge 24, 20, something like that for whatever, I think for an autograph and free selfie. But for you, you're nothing. You, you don't have to pay anything. I'm like, oh, really? That's awesome. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but yeah, the con life is so much fun. You do amazing cosplay. Um, definitely, anybody listening to this, check out Just the Deets. Um, when and where uh, do you post your shows? I know you said they go on Facebook Live and all that um, through StreamYard. Um, but do you have a specific date um, that you uh, that you uh, po um, I guess go live? So. Um just the deets is thursdays at 9 p.m eastern standard time um so they'll get that up and running again and then locked to paranormal is monday nights okay. every other <laughs> bi-weekly at 9 p.m but after we go live the episodes automatically upload to either the locked up paranormal youtube page or my lydia manson um youtube page all, all of the episodes just automatically upload there so if you don't get to see it live and comment and join in on the conversation you can always go back and watch our past episodes and make sure you like and subscribe <laughs> awesome definitely and the last question i got for you do you have anything that you would like to promote any other projects websites social media accounts anything at all to the listening and viewing audience so I have my Instagram, Lydia Manson 88. Um, and then I also have my TikTok, uh, Lydia Manson 88. I try to make it simple. So I don't <laughs> get <laughs> um, just, I just filmed a movie last month down in West Virginia mm. called uh, Macabre Mountain. And that has Felissa Rose in it. Nice. Um, it also has Robert Mukes from A House of a Thousand Corpses, um, Elsie Holt from Your Next. So a lot of big names in that one. So we're, that was super exciting because that one was, we actually got to film in like um, a corn maze. We got to film in like an actual like haunted house attraction. Mm -hmm. so that was pretty cool because up until then, most of like the films I've done were like on one location, like, you know, right. oh, we're going to Airbnb and make use of it. So it was really cool to actually like branch out and get to go to several locations. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I think... 
they'll be doing a finishing funds campaign for Macau Mountain coming up soon. So if anybody's interested in that, they can keep an eye out. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Lydia, for joining me today. Because um, for anybody that doesn't know, this is taped, but it is airing on Halloween. So happy Halloween, everybody. I'm so excited <laughs> to uh, have you on for a Halloween special edition of Slasher Scotty. And don't forget to slash that subscribe button. <laughs> thank you, Lydia, for joining me today. Absolutely. And to let everybody go, how about we go with a laugh? <laughs> I can't do it, so I'm just going to laugh regularly with you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Yep. Bye.